Welcome to Lecture Online, and here's our first example of how to apply the mesh analysis by inspection method to solve this simple circuit. So we have a simple circuit with two meshes. We have two voltage sources, and typically when you see voltage sources, you think mesh analysis, and we have five resistors. First, we want to assign the mesh currents to each of the two meshes. Here, we can say this is current one and current two. I prefer the clockwise direction, but then it really doesn't matter. If the result that you get is a negative number, then you simply know that the, the current is actually in the opposite direction. The next thing we want to do is find the resistance matrix elements, because eventually we want to have something that looks in this format. We have the resistance matrix right here, multiplied times the current matrix, because essentially what we're trying to do here is find the unknown currents, and then we set that equal to the voltage matrix. So we need to find the diagonal elements first. That means we need to find R11, and that is simply the sum of the resistances around mesh 1, which means it's equal to 2 plus 12 plus 4, that is equal to 18, and that becomes your element up here, 18. The next element is the one down here. We're going down the diagonal, and we want to find R22 which means that it's equal to the sum of all the resistances around loop number two. That would be nine plus two plus 12. That's 14 plus nine, which is 23. And that's the number that goes in here. Now we want to find the off diagonal elements. That means in this case, we're finding uh, R12, which is equal to R21, which is equal to the resistance, the sum of the resistances that they share. In this case, they're only sharing one resistance, and so that would be the number 12, but then we have to put a negative sign in front of that. So minus 12, and that goes in both these off diagonal locations, minus 12 and minus 12. Now we still need to get the voltages in order to find the mesh voltages. What we need to do is we need to travel around each of the meshes in the same direction as the current the way we drew it. And if we go across the voltage source from the negative to the positive end, that's a positive voltage. If you go across the voltage from the positive end to the negative end, that is a negative voltage. So for the first mesh, we get a positive 45, but for the negative, for the second mesh, we get a negative 30. We're now ready to solve for I1 and I2. First, I want to find the determinant of this matrix. So D is equal to, so to find the determinant, you multiply these two elements and you subtract the multiplication of those two elements. 18 times 23, and then we subtract the product of those two, that is minus 144, and we get 270 for the determinant. Now to find matrix number one, what we do there is we replace the first column by the voltages from our voltage matrix, 45 and minus 30, and we keep the second column, minus 12 and 23. This is equal to the product of those two, 45 times 23, and subtract the product of those two. Notice they're both negative, so we're going to subtract it. Uh, minus uh, 12 times that, that's 360, and we get 675. To find the second matrix, we take the first matrix here, the determinant matrix, we keep the first column, but we, we replace the second column by the voltages in the voltage matrix. So this becomes 45 and minus 30. Notice 18 times minus 30, 18 times 30, that is a minus 540, and then we subtract the product of these two, but since that's one of them is negative, that's like adding the two, so plus 12 times 45, and we get zero. That's interesting. Now to find the two currents, the two mesh currents. I1 can be found by taking the result of the first matrix and dividing it by the determinant. In this case, that's 675 divided by 270. And let's see what we get. 675 divided by 270, and we get 2.5. And that would be amps. So there's 2.5 amps in the first mesh here. The second mesh, I2, that is equal to the result of the second matrix divided by the determinant. Zero divided by 270 is still zero. So we get zero amps of current in the second mesh. That means through the 9-ohm resistor and the 2-ohm resistor, we have zero current. But through the 2-ohm and the 4-ohm resistor, we have 2.5 amps. What about through the 12-ohm resistor? 
Well, the 12 ohm resistor, the current through here, and let's go ahead and write that down. So let's assume we have a current in this direction. Let's call it I3, just to make, to make it simpler, I3. How do we find I3? Well, there's two different ways. I3 is equal to the sum of the two mesh currents to this resistor. Notice that I1 is in the same direction as I3, so you take I3. I1, mesh current I1, but you subtract mesh current I2 because that's in the opposite direction, minus I2. So in this case, since I1 is equal to 2.5 amps, it's 2.5 amps minus 0 amps, which is equal to 2.5 amps for the current through resistor 12 in the direction of the blue arrow. And that's how we find the various currents in the circuit, by using the mesh analysis by inspection. It's a very quick method. You very quickly add up the resistances to come up with the resistance matrix. It's very easy to find the voltage matrix, and it's fairly easy to work out a matrix pattern like this or equations in matrix format like that. Now, of course, that's a simple example. We'll show you some more complicated examples later on, but that's how we use this method, and it's a really nice method to use.